All right, William, let's go to work in the Bible. In the book of Philippians chapter 1. Yeah. I'm going to start reading at verse 15. Follow me. I want to show you the different ways Christ is preached. That's right. All right. Philippians chapter 1, we'll start at verse 15. Because many folk brag. We preach Jesus where we at, so what? <laughs> what does that prove? Nothing. Nothing. Well, Pastor Dennis, you mean to tell me we preach Jesus where we at, and that absolutely can mean nothing? It can absolutely mean nothing. That's right. Because Jesus is preached in several ways. That's right. Yeah, me good. Follow me. Philippians chapter 1, we'll start at verse 15. Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. Some indeed preach Christ out of what? Even of hope. Out, even out of envy. Out of jealousy. That means they, they, don't, they don't mean what they're doing. That's right. They preach it out of emotion. They're jealous of something. And, and strife. They're very mad and angry, and they pick certain scriptures just to get back at you. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And some also of goodwill. Some, they mean well, but they just don't know what they're doing. That's right. They mean well, goodwill. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. The one preach Christ of contention. Some preach Christ out of contention. Not sincerely. They don't mean it, don't mean it at all. Look at these categories and look at your church and evaluate how Christ is preached. That's right. Is he preaching Christ because he's jealous of another preacher trying to compete with him? Mm. Is he preaching Christ out of strife because he's mad with the preacher? Because the preacher's prosperous and he isn't. Mm. Is he preaching Christ to throw off at your wife because she won't give him attention? Mm. And he's the pastor. Oh, you listen to the old man. Go ahead. Is he preaching Christ out of strife because the individual that used to give large sums of money came to his senses and stopped now? And he's trying to convict him by pounding the name on him and misuse that name? That's right. Is Christ being preached at the form of manipulation but not appreciation? Mm. Is Christ being preached out of disrespect? That's right. How is he being preached in your church? That's right. And how are you using Christ out of your mouth? Are you listening to the old man? Listen. Some indeed preach Christ. Some indeed preach Christ. Even of envy. Of envy. And strife. Right. And some also of goodwill. Goodwill. The one preach Christ of one contention. One preach Christ of contention. Not sincerely. Don't mean what they're doing. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Supposed to add affliction to my bonds. But the other of love. The other out of love. Very compassionate. Knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What did he say? What then? Uh oh. Fifth chapter and verse. Philippians chapter 1. Now we're at verse 18. What then? Notwithstanding. Not Withstanding every way, every way, whether in pretense, when you pretend you're faking, when you pretend you're a fraud, when you pretend you're a phony, when you pretend you don't mean what you're doing, whether in pretense, look at this, whether in pretending or in, or truth. in truth or in reality, what's being done in both ways, Christ is preached. Yeah. Yes, sir. Pastor Jennings, I don't understand as sincere the name of Jesus Christ is. How can someone be a phony? Mm. Turn your TV on. True. <laughs> so sincere the way Jake's preacher. What's so sincere when Joel Osteen talk about? Yeah. Jimmy Swagger, Benny Hinn. That's right. what, is, what is so sincere about these mega devils? Amen. Nothing. The only thing they're sincere about is trying to make you believe that Christ will help you, save you, be with you based upon the amount of money you give. And the way they teach it, if you don't have a lot, Christ don't do a lot. That's right. Where Christ ain't never taught such foolishness. No. Christ taught that you will have the poor with you always. always. That's right. I don't have to have money to connect with God. I got to have sincerity and repentance to connect with God. That's right. That's right. That's right. How is Christ preached to you? That's right. And how is your belief in Christ? in Christ? This is something that most people have never thought of. So people loosely say, I believe in Jesus. How? I know. What do you mean how? You just believe. How? I was like, ask him, how do you cook? You either cook good or bad. When you cook biscuits, either they melt in my mouth or they're going to break my teeth. One or the other. How is Christ preached? How is he preached? To you. Which brings about your servitude to Jesus. That's right. If Christ is being taught wrong, your method of serving him is wrong. Right. Get your wrong under the right name. That's right. Are you getting it? That's right. Wrong in worship. Wrong in service. Wrong in your professing salvation. Wrong in preaching. Wrong in everything under the right name. That's right. That's right. When that happens, that's the misrepresentation of the name of Jesus Christ. There are plenty Jesus in the world. That's what Jesus taught us. 
many going out saying they are Christ. Christ. The nation of Islam says that Elijah Muhammad is the Christ, right. is the Jesus that the world been waiting on. Elijah Muhammad died in 1975. Now they said that Farrakhan is the Jesus. In fact, Farrakhan said, I am a little Jesus. Jesus taught us. And Jesus answered. Give chapter and verse. Now in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 4. Get me. And Jesus answered and said unto them. There's a man of Philippines that says he is the original Jesus Christ. There's a man of Puerto Rico that says he is Jesus Christ. There was a false prophet back in the 40s and 50s, the founder of the House of All Prayer for All People. He called himself Sweet Daddy Grace. He had hair past his shoulders, and his fingernails was one and two and three inches long until they curved. They called him Sweet Daddy. That's a pimp title. God has sent some in the church, first apostles, second daily prophets, thirdly teachers, you know, the evangelists and pastors. None of his ministers was called Sweet Daddy. No. That's, that's pip. That's pipism. That's right. So if you got a pastor, you call him Sweet Daddy. He's your pimp. That's right. Amen. All right, listen. Amen. Amen. Daddy Grace said he was the reincarnation of Jesus. Then there was another false prophet in the 1920s and 1930s. The old heads remember him, Father Divine. Father Divine declared himself not to be the reincarnation of Jesus, but to be God Himself. Hello. And whenever you will go into any of his churches, when you come in the lobby, there's a big picture. And you touch the picture before you go in the sanctuary and say, peace, Father. Oh. Now, think of it. How ignorant and how gullible people are. This is how they get so caught up in men. To this day, the House of All Prayer for All People organization is still going on, and they claim to be apostolic. You can see them all over YouTube. They got a brass band, too, brother. One thing I say about the devil, they got a good sound. Man, the devil got a sound. All the bishops that's become the overseer take on the title, Sweet Daddy. Daddy Grace, Daddy McCullen, Daddy Bailey, all of these big pimps. And they wish up Daddy Grace. Any song that has the name Jesus Christ, they take it out. And they say, we praise Daddy. He said, all oh, this is here today because of Daddy. So if you're saying mine, 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 Jesus is mine, they don't sing that. They say mine, 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 sweet daddy is mine. Mine when I'm weary, mine when I'm dreary. And I'm talking about an auditorium can be packed with two and three or four thousand people. How gullible, how ignorant, how spiritually warped are people wherein they will ignore the scriptures of Jesus giving everybody a heads up. That's right. A warning. That's right. Listen at Jesus. St. Matthew chapter 24, we're at verse 4. And what? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed. First, he tell you, take heed. Take heed. Now, you don't tell the people take heed who's already observant. That's right. You tell them take heed because you see that they're asleep and they're not paying attention. That's right. That's right. Take heed. Take Warning. Heed. Pay attention. Observe. That's right. The best observation is when you have scriptural observation. That's, right. That's why you put cameras around your house. So cameras can do work while you sleep. Yeah, right. Word of God is our camera. It works while you are just unconscious. You're busy in some church jumping and shouting and doing the boogaloo. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but spiritually, unconscious. You have no business getting so happy, so joyful, until spiritually you are mentally incompetent until you don't notice even when a lie is being preached. That's true. You must be so spiritually and scripturally alert and in tune yes. with what's coming from the pulpit because you should never come to God's house and have to separate bones from fish because there is no bones in God's word. God said meat for the belly and belly for the meat is supposed to be just meat in here. That's right. That's right. There is no separating. There ain't nobody had to pick through what the apostles preach and separate bones from fish. Never. That's right. so if you got the same gospel they had, it's a boneless meat. It's boneless. That's right. Are oh, you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Oh, we'll take God. The word of God says what? And Jesus answered and said unto them. Jesus answered and said unto them. Take heed that no man deceive you. No man. No man? No man. They got your uncle, your grandfather, your father, your husband. That's right. Your brother, your friend. No man. Your son. 
Never mind relation. That's right. When the scripture says no man, that got everybody. That's it. Listen. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name. It didn't give a number. Many. Many shall come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. Now hold it. Don't narrow that down to someone only actually saying I am Christ. Right. It also ties in with those that profess the name of Christ. That's right. Who hide under his name and who also declare themselves to be the actual Messiah. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ. I am Christ. And shall deceive many. Shall deceive what? Shall deceive many. Oh yes. Oh yes. People catching planes, going to see some nut somewhere who say he's Jesus. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ. Look at Jesus. He saw the actions of the people so he can give you a heads up. St. Matthew chapter 24. How can Jesus know this coming? Because the book says Jesus of Nazareth knew all things. All things. Listen. St. Matthew chapter 24, now we're at verse 23. Yes. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo. Any man say to you, go. Lo. Lo. Here is Christ. There's Jesus. Or there. Or there. Believe it not. That's plain. That's plain. So you got to watch it. That's plain. Puerto Rico, Africa, Europe, America, That's it. Canada. Have you noticed on almost every continent, there's some mega nut. <laughs> That's right. That's claiming right. that he's the Messiah. That's right. Well, let me say to you, messianic hypocrites. Amen. Here's a minister from the hood of Philadelphia. That's right. Challenging all you Jesuses out there. Amen. I'm declaring none of you none ever was Jesus. None of you ever will be Jesus. I'll tell you what you do. Show me your hands. That's right. Let me press my hands in your side. That's it. So I don't be faithless. So I can believe. believe. Then I can say like Thomas, my Lord and my God. That's right. Yes, Lord. That's right. My brothers and sisters of the Philippines, my brothers and sisters of Puerto Rico, yes, my brothers and sisters of America and Canada and Africa and Europe, right. how can you ignore the warning of the real Jesus the Christ? Take heed that no man deceive you. Give chapter and verse again. Matthew chapter 24, back at verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Jesus answered and said unto them, and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed. That's right. They use the name of Jesus on the women in their congregation. Yes, they will. So you can make babies for him. That's right. Am I right? That's right. They use the name Jesus and manipulate you out of your clothes so they can pregnant you in Jesus' name. That's right. That's right. You ain't got to use the name Jesus. Just tell her you want to get laid. That's right. Don't be hypocrite about it. Just tell her, you know. Just tell her. What, 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 what that you got down there? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think about time that you and I just hook up. Well, that's right. You ain't got to declare yourself Jesus the Magnificent. <laughs> that's right. If he's Jesus, while he's in the limousine, put that hypocrite on a donkey. That's right. Like the Bible said, he rode. Well, that's right. Hallelujah. If you're Jesus, why do you have the earthly father? That's right. If you're Jesus, can you trace your line back to Judah? That's it. So the book says it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Out of Judah. Amen. If you're Jesus, did you come from God? Mm. And are you going to God? That's right. Yes, sir. If you're Jesus the Christ today, you should not have blood. That's right. That's right. They pierced them in the side. Out came blood and water. They placed the body of flesh and bones in the grave. Yes. Three days and three nights. Right. During that period of time, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, was preaching to the spirits that was in prison. Right. That they may be judged according to men in the flesh and live according to God in the spirit. Right. The spirit stepped back in the body of flesh and bones, right. which made the body glorified. Right. That's when he put on the same glory that he had before the world, world was. Picks the body up in a glorified state. Right. No longer have to knock on doors. Now he can appear to the apostles That's right. while the doors are shut. Right. So if any of the religious leaders are supposed to be Jesus, yes, sir. you should be able to appear and disappear. That's right. At your leisure. At your leisure. Are you getting the Hold on. Hold take off. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And Jesus answered and said, So I them. challenge That's right. all of the Jesus of the world. Not one today 
That's right. Is the son of the living God. That's right. Not one of you. Not one of them. Or the Messiah. Not one of you. Or the Redeemer. That's right. Not one of you is the Christ. Amen. Not one of you. You viewers. You're following a blasphemous liar. That's right. You're following a fraud. That's right. You have ignored the warning. That's it. That Jesus gave you. I don't care if it's your daddy. Your daddy is a liar. That's right. Including your pastor. Amen. Do you hear the word of God talking here? And Jesus, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. Chapter and verse again. St. Matthew chapter 24 and we're at verse 4. You know when he shed blood, there was a preacher in Titusville, Florida. And uh, years ago on Frankfurt Avenue at our old temple, he came and preached. And he preached a lie. He said when Jesus died and shed blood, he got a bucket and collected some blood, took it up to heaven and spread it around the kingdom. My Lord. He got out. I went after him too. I said, Bishop, where's that in the Bible? He said, well, we we'll get a chance to talk. We'll, we'll talk later. He copped in his car and was gone. Huh. <laughs> because I wanted to find that bucket. That's right. Here's the old man now. Think of it. Think of it. Everybody all right? Amen. I want to take my time and soak you a little. Amen. Pass him in the side, John 1934, quickly. St. John chapter 19. And that verse 34. I want to answer a question that somebody wrote me about. Jesus having flesh and blood in heaven. Mm. And he took blood in heaven to atone for our sins. Mm. Anyone tell you that any atonement for anybody took place in heaven, they are scripturally illiterate. Illiterate. And they are just from an educational perspective illiterate. That's right. Atonement is an earthly act. That's right. It's not a heavenly act. In other words, they don't take place in heaven. No. Atonement take place on earth. Yeah. In the Old Testament, when they got a lamb or a sacrifice that was spotless without a blemish to atone for the sins of the people. Jesus, who was God manifest in the flesh, that flesh was the Messiah, that flesh was the mediator, that flesh was the man Christ. Jesus took the place of all Old Testament sacrifice. For he come along, offer up right. that body once for all through the eternal spirit. Now, the atonement took place because he died on the altar. The altar was the cross itself. That's because it be the man that hanged upon the tree, altar means that place which is sacred or sanctified for the offering of a sacrifice. sacrifice. So the altar in this place would be the cross. The altar in this place would be the cross or the tree that he hung on. That's it. When he was pierced in the side, the Bible speaks plain. St. John chapter 19. I want you to follow the track record. That's right. St. John chapter 19 and verse 34. Get this. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. Yes. And forthwith came there out blood and water. Came out blood and water. And he saw it that bear record that his record is true. Yes. And he knoweth that he saith is true. All right. That he might believe. Uh -huh. But these things were done that the scripture might be fulfilled. These things were done. These things were done that the scripture, the scripture should be might fulfilled. Be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. A bone not be broken. What else? And again another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. Then what? And after this, Joseph of Arimathea. Now, after he was pierced. Next event. That's right. Listen good. He was pressing inside, out came blood and water. Now the word of God tells us the next stage. And after what, this, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, he was a follower of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, what happened? besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Now he wanted the body. Remember, this is after the blood was lost. That's right. Press him in the side, out came blood and water. He sought who? Be besought Pilate, he sought Pilate that he might take away the he body of Jesus. the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. Yes. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. Look at the event. This is after he was pierced. That's right. Pilate consented. Joseph of Arimathea now got Jesus' body. That's right. Come on, Williams. And there came also Nicodemus. Now Nicodemus come, the same Nicodemus that came to Jesus by night, and Jesus gave him the born again lesson. That's right. right. I say to you, except the man that born of the water, no the spirit, he cannot enter in. Right. And Nicodemus being a ruler of the Jews, but yet ignorant. Yeah. You say, how can I? A man is old. I can't a man when he's old after the second time into his mother's womb. All that education and dumb as a brick. That's right. Because when you come out your mother's womb and you're a grown man, you ain't going back in there. I mean, imagine. I mean, the only way for you to be born again, you got to clam back in your mother's womb. Lord. Man, our mother be dead and tired. That's man. right. You make it up in your mind, Mama, I, I want to be born again. She's going to look at you. Stand up, brother. He coming to his mama. My Lord. He want to be born again. He says, me, you'll be all right. <laughs> now, you come out head first. How is head first going in? My Lord. This was the knowledge or the limited knowledge that Nicodemus had. He was hung up on it. Up on what it. Jesus was saying was so deep, so broad. That's right. And the very term, you must be born again. Yeah. Jesus threw something spiritual at him. Yeah. Nicodemus was colonel. Yet, a role of the Jews would show you your natural position doesn't have nothing to do with your spiritual comprehension. That's right. You can have a high position in life, but spiritually illiterate, spiritually dumb. You can have a PhD, a DD, a doctor of divinity, a student of theology, but when it comes to the spiritual things, the Bible says the things of God no man knows but the Spirit of God. That's why the Spirit of God got to get a man that he may be identified the things of God, and want the Spirit get a man and acquaint him with the things of God, now he can speak the things of God by the Spirit of God. Are you getting it? Amen. So Nicodemus was messed up. Yes, I mean, a man, when he's old, go back the second time with his mother's womb and be born. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus had to clear it up. Good. Oh, yes. That's when he, he threw it in. Look, fairly, fairly. <laughs> I said to you, he had to break it down more. Except the man be born of water. Water. And of the spirits. You cannot enter in. You've never been born of the water in your life until you repent of your sins and been baptized in water. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you've never been born of the spirit in your life unless you've been filled with the Holy Ghost speaking another tongue, just like they obtained it on the day of Pentecost. The same thing happened to them, got to happen to you. Right. It was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Mm-hmm. As the Spirit give utterance. That means as the Spirit speaker. So it's, if it's as the Spirit give utterance, then you should not be in no church where the preacher can count to three and he get you talking. That's right. Because they ain't as the Spirit give utterance. That's as some fake evangelist control what you do. That's right. Anybody say, well, Pastor Dennis, I can't feel the Spirit until I see you. I'm going to tell you, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Because I'm not your Holy Ghost. I'm not your God. Because if I was your God, I'd see you to hell for making a statement. Our Holy Ghost hang on scriptural order. That's it. All right, come on. I want to show you the stage. The person on the side out came blood and water. And after this, Joseph of Amethyst. for the body. Nicodemus come along right along with him. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night. Then what? And brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes. All right, now okay. they're going to get the body prepared for burial. About a hundred pound weight. All right. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the, the spices. Taking details of what they've done with his physical body. That's right. In other words, I'm taking this route to shoot the pieces. He took blood into heaven. That's it. I'm showing you detail. Notice, right. the person on the side out came blood and water. They're getting the body prepared for burial. Not yet. That the Bible mentioned where they got more blood from anywhere. No, didn't. He didn't get no blood transfusion. The Bible didn't say he created more because if he did create more, I want to read it. That's right. The Bible gave specific detail. Hear me good, hear me good, hear me good, hear me good. St. John, John 19, now at verse 40. What is it? Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, and as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Yes. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. Yes. There laid they Jesus, therefore. Got the spices. Got the Bible prepared. After they pitched him in the side, right. they found a sepulchre right. that was new. And there, there lay they Jesus, therefore. Then what? Because of the Jews' preparation day. Then. For the sepulchre was nigh at hand. What else? The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. Yes. Unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stones taken away from the sepulchre. Then what? Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And what is that? And saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. Now, the Catholics teach, as long as other religions do, that flesh and blood is in heaven. And these blind men are telling people that Jesus, after he was pierced in the side, made more blood. That's one of them scriptures that not even God thought of. No. Because the Bible is detailed what happened to his body after they pierced him in the side. Viewers, That's right. will you please stop following men that just make up stuff That's right. to satisfy their own comic book feeling? That's right. That's right. If a man tell you Jesus made more blood after he rose, Tell him, read the scripture that says he did. Yes. Like I got that bishop who said that Jesus took blood, scooped it up in a bucket, and spread it all around the kingdom. I said, where's that at? Where's that he at? said, we'll talk about that later. I, he, walked, he walked out the church door. I was right behind him. Wait, 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 wait. Come back. Where's the bucket? That's right. Come on back. That's right. They make stuff up. Yeah. And people go off in a tongue, shaking their hands and hearing that they come at the frog. Amen. I'm telling the world, right. come back to Bible. That's it. Forget about this made up trash. Amen. Come back to Bible. That's it. Bible ain't said he made more blood no. after he died. No. The Bible ain't said he got more blood after he died. No. The Bible ain't said he got a blood transfusion That's right. after he died. The Bible ain't made no such statement. That's right. What is that? That's two kinds of blaspheme. Yeah. That's blaspheme against the Son of Man, and that's blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, because you're saying the Holy Ghost done something that the Holy Ghost ain't never said. That's right. Which make you a liar on God. On God. That's right. All right, let's go back to where we were now. We were in Philippians chapter 1. And right, verse let's when Christ is preached. Let's get born naked, go out naked. It's time mm. to get the foundation now. <laughs> Come on, let's go to work. Amen. I want to get the naked folk dressed up. First Timothy chapter 6, and we'll start reading at verse 6. All right, follow me and get me good. But godliness with contentment is great gain. What did he say? Godliness with contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. A lot of folk is content without God. That's true. And don't haven't gained anything. That's true. True prosperity is not houses, cars, money, or land. True prosperity is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of who God is. That's right. You can have all the money you want, all the land you want, and own a whole car museum. You don't have God, you're a poor fool. That's right. Are oh, you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Everybody have to come on back to the Bible and look at life the way Jesus taught it. Amen. And this is where the world have error. Oh, yeah. You look at life from what Bishop said. That's true. You look at life from what some prophet said. Hmm. You look at life from what some elder, some pastor said, yeah. some TV evangelist. <laughs> We should look at life from what Jesus said. That's right. He don't lie about it. No. He'll set you up and let you know what's coming and what's already here. All right, right, get this. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness 
With contentment and great gain. For we brought nothing. We brought nothing into this world. Into this world. And it is certain. It is certain. We can carry we nothing out. We can carry nothing out. Nothing. Certain. Another scripture says, Nigga. 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 Came I into the world. Nigga. I shall return. That's right. Now, you brought nothing. Nothing. I want everybody to hear me look at yourself. You that are watching, I thank you so much. You ain't nothing. In Job chapter 1 and at verse 21. I want to show you in more detail. Follow me and get me. Job chapter 1 and we're at verse 21. Chapter verse again. Job chapter 1 and we'll start at verse 20. That's what? Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. Yes. And fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked. Naked. I came from my mother's womb. And naked. Naked. Shall I return thither. I'm going back. The Lord gave. The Lord gave. And the Lord hath taken away. What's the result? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Everybody came here without anything. That's right. Everybody that left and that will leave. Will leave. You're leaving out the way you came. That's right. Naked. Without anything. You may say, Pastor Dennis, I disagree with that. Well, Pastor Dennis, if that's so, how is it when a person is alive, they give reports of what he's worth? This actor or actress, 20 million. This person net worth, 100 million. This person net worth, 500 million. Mm. 3 billion. I show you what you're worth. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 17. I show you from the Bible what you're worth in God's eyes. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I love it when God talks right. because he don't fluctuate. <laughs> no, he won't. Hear this now. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 17. What is it? All nations before him. All nations. Amen. Not before water, brothers. All nations before him. Amen. That's right. <laughs> not before no studio actor or actresses. Not before Congress. Not before Parliament. Not before no king, no prince, no president. No. All nations before him. I'm not impressed with no actor or no actress. Not impressed. I travel the world. I have said more. I run up on actors and actresses in the, pool, in the uh, airport. That's right. Sometimes they're on the same plane I'm on. Amen. Some of them watched the program and came and told me out of their own mouth. <clears throat> Some asked me, did I want the autograph? My response has been the same. The same. No, I can write. That's right. I can write. I don't want to swear. What, I want, what I want your signature for? You write your name, I write mine. What do I care? That's right. You mean to tell me, Pastor Jenner, is Oprah coming here now you wouldn't get excited? No. Who is that? That's right. It's just Oprah. <laughs> that don't excite me. No. You don't want to obey God? Why should I get excited? I'm not moved by celebrity status. Now, if Jesus walking here, I may, I may do a handstand. That's right. That's right. Jesus walking here, man, I take my coat off and lay it so he don't, his feet don't touch the floor. Be in front of him, just each of my coat on. So his feet can step on it. That's I right. get carried away over him. Oh, yeah. Anything else? You born of a woman like I am. And you don't got, you got to obey God like I got to obey him. Or you are dying and go to hell. That's right. Now, let me show you your true net worth, your Bible net worth. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 17. All right. All nations before him. All nations before him. That him is God. That's right. All nations. Come on, son. All nations before him are as nothing. Are as nothing. And watch God bring it more closer than that. And they are counted to him. They are counted to him. Less than less, nothing. Less. Less than nothing. Than nothing. And vanity. And what? And vanity. And you're in vain. Now, <laughs> get right. this. That's right. As far as we can go at the human family, we can say, you ain't nothing. Some of us don't say that right. We say, you ain't nothing. <laughs> you ain't nothing. That's right. But when God get a hold of nothing, he make it less than that. Less than nothing. Now, there's no numbers less than zero unless you start putting negatives with those numbers. That's right. But when you become less than nothing. Less than. That's right. Every celebrity that walked the planet without God. Without, without God in your life. And God ain't in your life because you're a member of some church. No. God is in your life when you obey his order. That's right. You obey his command. That's right. And you follow his precepts. That's it. All nations before him are as much. All nations. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All nations. All nations. Before him are as nothing. I, I, I don't care. I don't care how popular you are. People can run around you, take pictures, and women crying and all that <laughs> That's stuff. That's right. I see when folks, they go to concerts and out there crying. Or a celebrity <laughs> in the airport, people crying, want to touch his clothes and touch his hand. And then some say, oh, I'm not going to wash my hand. You old dirty, filthy, stink guy. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You mean to tell me a man can touch you, you don't want to wash? <laughs> Your only reason for not washing because he touch you? That's it. There ain't nothing but dust touching dust. That's all. That's all. You got to look at it for what it is. That's right. Someone said, you take the fun out of things. No, I don't. The Bible does. Right. The Bible just bring you back to reality. That's it. That's Jesus right. To see you going crazy over somebody coming to the Bible. Get yourself right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Glory to God. All nations before him. All nations before him. Are as nothing. You're nothing. 
And they accounted to him, accounted to him less than nothing. See, they accounted to him. And if we're the children of God, our approach and our thinking got to be the same the way. Same way. Let's go back to Job now. What did he say? Back in Job chapter 1 and at verse 21. That's what? And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Now you came out naked. And, and naked shall I return thither. And what does that mean? The New Testament would broaden it. Back in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 7. And? For we brought nothing into this world. We brought nothing into the world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. So nakedness means you don't have anything. Don't have anything. And you're going to die without anything. That's right. Now, right. spiritual nakedness. Yeah. Adam! Amen. Adam! I heard you. I heard they heard the son. voice. I heard the voice. In Genesis chapter 3 and at verse 8. Listen at this. And they heard the voice of the Lord God. They heard the voice of the Lord God. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day. His voice was walking. Mm. A lot of folks overlooked that part. His voice was walking. Walking. When? In the garden, in the cool of the day. Cool of the day. Cool. That's right. Mm. Let you know the change of climate. Mm. God voice walk. walk. God voice move. That's right. I ain't walking like this. God voice walking, meaning God's voice moving. Why is the Bible using the term walking? Which means the voice of God was approaching them. That's right. Getting closer and closer. Because a voice don't have feet. That's right. A voice is the sound from him that do walk. That's right. The voice of God, hallelujah, is the sound of God. And it comes in the cool, the cool of the day. Of the day. Of the day. Are you listening? That's right. What is it? And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Adam. And his wife hid themselves, why? From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Uh -huh. Now we're at, up at verse 7. Hold on, sir. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. They knew. Their knowledge of nakedness came That's right. through disobedience. That's right. In other words, disobedience make you naked. Mm. Disobedience peels off Strips off mm. righteousness because you are clothed in righteousness. Disobedience dismantle your righteousness and start to peel off your righteousness and start to dismantle your holiness. So disobedience, when you're disobedient, you are getting naked. That's right. <laughs> Obedience works the opposite. That's right. It clothes you in righteousness, wherein disobedience strips you. Yes, sir. What did he say? Genesis chapter 3, now we're at verse 10. Get chapter verse again. Genesis chapter 3, now we're at verse 10. What? And he said, I heard thy voice. I want to take you to school tonight. Oh, yeah. I heard the voice. I heard thy voice in the garden. Yes. And I was afraid. I was afraid. Because I was naked. Because I heard your voice and I was scared. And what was my reason for being scared? Because I was naked. My Lord, my Lord, man. His naked wasn't just Lord, nah. the physical body. That's right. That's right. His nakedness also represent another stage. That's right. He was now a fallen man. Mm. So I was naked naturally, mm. and I was naked spiritually. That's right. When I obeyed you, you had me clothed. That's right. Yes, mm. sir. Viewers, and you that are here, the gospel that you're getting in your church is supposed to dress you up, clothe you. Yes, sir. From head to toe, because we are at war with Satan. That's right. So the scripture says, put on the whole armor of God, helmet of salvation, That's right. feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, having the shield of faith and the sword, your lords girded about with truth. That's right. Scriptures come to dress us in righteousness, a robe of righteousness. Robe of righteousness. Disobedience. Make your righteousness become loose. loose. And the longer you are disobedient, the more loose your garment becomes. That's right. Until Satan have no difficulty causing you to agree to slide out of the garment of the righteousness of God. That's right. Your love for falsehood. Keep you naked. Keep you naked. You are jumping and shouting and speaking in tongue and a church full of emotional streakers. That's right. Spiritually, 
Nigga. That's right. The night is in sin. Give chapter the rest of what you have. Romans chapter 13, now we're at verse 12. Listen. The night is far spent. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on. Let us put on. The armor of light. The what? The armor of light. The armor of light. God come clothe his people with light. What is the light that he can dress you up with? Knowledge. That's right. Wisdom. Yeah. Understanding. That's right. He want the, you to pull off. Pull off. The night the is far spent. The, the night day, is far spent. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off. Cast off. The works of darkness. Cast off darkness. That's right. Get rid of your nakedness. That's right. That's right. When you got women preachers, you're naked. Naked. When you got three gods in heaven, naked. Naked. Two gods in heaven, naked. Uh, they're, they're posting now services from the European tour that we did. They got some of England up on YouTube and they got some of Holland when I was in Amsterdam. I was looking at some of Holland today. I didn't know it was posted until I looked at it. And there was somebody commenting out of ignorance and stupidity. Is there a pastor didn't preach that God is his own son? You liar. I ain't never preached that lie. No, never said that. God because, yeah, 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 yeah. God ain't never been a son. No. God ain't nobody's son. Nobody's son. God don't have no mother. You're infidel. No mother. Son of God was a son. That's right. The son of God was God's son. It was his only begotten son. What That's was right. the son of God? Flesh and blood. The Bible said that holy thing. Which shall be born, which shall be born oh. of thee, shall be called the son of God. And God was the father or the creator of that holy thing. And the holy thing was flesh and blood, which was a human body. Mary, baby, God's son, the redeemer, the savior, Christ Jesus. That's right. I ain't never preached that God was his own son. You <laughs> slew foot infidel. That's right. I'm jump on Pastor Jenner so I can take you on a 1931 ride. That's right. Shoot you up with Bible and throw you on the curve of your church. <laughs> Get the viewers. Come back, on, son. Back in Genesis chapter 3, right, verse 7. What is it? And the eyes of them both were open. What? The eyes of them both were open. The eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they knew they was in sin. Hold it! Hmm. Now, you that study religious theology, this one trickled down. It's in the apostolic, it's in the Baptist, it's in the Presbyterian. It's in the Lutheran, it's in the non-denominational, it's in the Pentecostals, it's in the Seventh-day Adventist. Right here, what he just read. Read it again, chapter and verse. Genesis chapter 3 and at verse 7. That's what? And the eyes of them both were open, and, and they knew that they were naked. Right then is where the bishops have said, when Adam and Eve's eyes came open, that's when the second dispensation started. Yeah. Conscience. Yeah. The Bible didn't say that. No. And then they say conscience closed when they all built the Tower of Babel. Well, think of how ignorant that sounds. Yeah. If conscience came to an end, why are you why you are aware? Why is it you are conscious when you're wrong? That's right. That's right. If it end, that means it don't exist. That's right. And if it don't exist, you won't be convicted. And if you're not convicted, you have no remorse. That's right. And if you have no remorse, how can you repent for something you ain't sorry for? Yeah. For you to repent, your conscience got to be bothered. That's right. To you that said it closed, you was a liar. That's a lie. That's right. Conscious will be here till Jesus come. That's right. That's why God's in a hard heart gospel. For what? To pound on man and woman conscience. That's right. He wants your conscience to be pricked, your conscience to be moved, so you consciously can respond to God's word. That's right. So, are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. So they said this is when the second dispensation opened. Open. And the first dispensation closed. Because man was no longer innocent. And they say after that, nobody became innocent after Adam. That's a lie. Everybody's born innocent. They committed no crime until they learn right from wrong. When they learn right from wrong, then they, be, they get the title sinner. It is incorrect you are born a sinner. Nobody born a sinner. Everybody's born with one sin. It's an inherited sin. As the fall of the first father, Adam, and the first mother, which is the mother of all living Eve, as the transgression, we are born in lust. Fashion and iniquity, born in lust, and the sins of their actions affect everybody. That's right. So we are born with a singular sin, the Adamic nature. That's right. Sinner is one that practice sinning. That's right. Sinner is one that practice sinning. And then you earn, you got to work to get that title. That's right. And then you get paid. So say, come on, Pastor Danny, Romans 6, 23. Romans, Romans chapter 6 and that verse 23. Tell me you don't get paid. For the wages of sin. What, 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 what did he say? For the wages of sin. Oh, you gonna get paid. Is death. <laughs> you gonna get paid, buddy. That's right. Wages. Wages of sin is death. You gotta admit, some sin feels good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, you know, some folk get all high and mighty. Oh, Pastor Jenny's all, I, I, I hate all sin. Stop that lie. <laughs> 
Let's right. call a spade a spade. Man, some, some sin the thought of it just make you like, man, I, I, got, I got to get myself together. <laughs> That's right. Get these over righteous hypocrites. I, I, I hate all sin. All, all, all sin. Yes, it's, it's evil. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I tell you, I have no desire. That lying up in the pulpit is lying. That's right. God didn't make me a preacher. I wouldn't be in Augusta for what? And if I was in Augusta, I ain't coming to no church. I'm going to find me a nice jam club. A nice laid back jazz club. So I can, you know, hear Cyrus Chestnut on somebody. Or whatever jazz band is entitled. I ain't coming to look at you. A bunch of long dresses and head covered folk. You gonna go to a club with it? Am I right? I said. That's right. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. That's right. So this is why the word says, "Don't be righteous over oh much. much. Stop trying to serve God by proving to others what you are and what you are not. No, your relationship must be between you and God alone." That's right. You came out of churches where you was busy trying to prove to Bishop you want to be saved. That man ain't your God. That's right. You got to prove to me you want to be saved. Yeah. That's between you and God. And God. That's right. Adam's and Eve actions are the actions of those who don't want to be caught That's right. by the Lord. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and All I was that afraid. I heard your voice in the garden. So the question is, if they would never heard a voice, would they have been scared? Mm. That's right. What make you fearful today about being naked in sin? The voice of God from the word of God. That's right. Do you try to hide sometimes? How? By trying to justify yourself in what you're doing. That's right. Any form of justification, and don't call a spade a spade, you're trying to hide from the voice of God. What's another thing that is the voice of God? The reality of reality. God. And you want to make the reality of God and downplay it. That's right. So it don't affect you. Yeah. But the same actions. Years ago, when Williams and I was much younger, me, Williams, and Roman, you may remember the conversation. We were sitting on Rome porch. And Rome said, he asked Williams, we called Williams soup. He said, soup. If Jesus was coming, and you had all these rock and roll records and all that stuff, would you try to hide him? I forgot what answer that Williams gave. He don't remember either. <laughs> but knowing him, he probably said, yeah. <laughs> probably so, Pastor. <laughs> he asked me, he said, Nick. He said, Nick, if Jesus was coming, you had all these records, man. Would you try to hide him? I said, no. He said, what? He said, but Jesus is knocking at your door. He said, why would you not hide him, Nick? I said, the Bible said Jesus of Nazareth. Know all things. So what am I gonna hide him for? He he see me playing them, he see me buying them, and he see me scrambling around my room trying to hide them. That's right. Now he come knock on my door and go to every spot. There it is. There it is. What have I come? Now if I go hiding, what is that? An admission that I know better. That's right. The very act of hiding is an admission. That's right. That I know better. Know better. Because if I did not know it was wrong, it would not even be in me to hide. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Glory to God. And Adam and his wife. You know the way we did as kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got in the thing that we should not have gotten. Daddy came home or mama came home. And we went scrambling. That's right. Hiding stuff. Seemed like parents had eyes everywhere. You know, we came, but we had no cameras all on the house and outside the house. Our parents was cameras. <laughs> I don't know how they can detect stuff. They just detect stuff by walking in the house. Go to be God. The truth of the matter is, if you're not honest with yourself, self, I can respect a sinner who's honest about themselves That's right. more than I could a so-called church brother or sister who's trying to project this over-righteous facade to prove to others what they're really not. That's right. All right, listen. That's right. Listen. And, and the eyes of them both were open. The eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. Viewers, and you're not ahead. You know you're naked. No, that's, right. that's why many of you that hate this program, you don't miss it. You actually watch it every time it comes on so you can make your comments. Oh, sometimes the same folk get on. Genesis is a liar. Genesis is evil. Genesis is an antichrist. And people be asking them, well, why do you keep watching? <laughs> and they say they keep watching so they can encourage others not to watch. Now, that don't make sense. No. Now... If you watch a movie and you don't like it, 
you don't want to see it again. That's right. You just don't want to see it. That's right. So obviously, hypocrite, it is something in this message. That's right. That makes the multiple heathens yeah. come back okay. over and over again. That's right. And just keep watching and keep criticizing, which is good. Which is good. Because you're learning. That's and right. you're going to give an account to God for what you're learning. That's right. What happened here? And the eyes of them both were opened. Now, the message of God come, when you hear God's voice, I believe the scripture says, harden not your heart. Not your heart. Are you listening? That's right. When you hear God's voice, harden not, not your, heart. your heart. I want to balance that out also with Titus, how God may manifest his word. Right. That God may manifest his word through preaching, that's how we hear God's voice. Amen. And God told his apostles, it is not you that speaketh, yes. but it's the voice of my father speaketh Amen. in you. Yes. So he called his preachers, whom he called and sent and appointed, ordained. It is not you that speaks. It is not you that's the preacher. It's the voice of my father. It's the presence of God. It's the authority of God. It's the power of the Holy Ghost in you that preach. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and at verse 7. That's what? Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying indeed. Okay, go back and read that again. Read that again. That's too much words jumbled together. I want the clarity of it. Hebrews chapter 4 and at verse 7. Yes. Again. Again. He limiteth a certain day. Yes. Saying in David. Saying what? Saying in David. What? Today after also so long a time. Today. After so long a time. As it is said, today if you will hear his voice. Today. Today. If you will hear his voice. His. 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 Go to God. His voice. God's voice. Harden not your hearts. What? Harden not your hearts. When your heart is hardened, you're in a state of nakedness. That's right. God is telling you, when you hear his voice, That's when you right. hear his word, hear his when you hear his message, how should we be? Harden not your hearts. Don't let your heart get hard. That's Don't right. be emotionally fighting it. That's right. Because something is preached that you know you're in. Yeah. And this is why you folks think I'm picking with you. Because you're in sin and I preach against sin. And you go to a church that don't preach against what you're doing. So you became comfortable in it like a pig in slop. That's right. That's right. You're comfortable going to church smoking and standing on at the steeple in the church grounds. Red preached today, didn't it? <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, hey, look, where are you going after the service? Huh? I'm going down to, to the bar down there. You know, Rabbit going down there and watch a few chicks, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Hey, what time Rabbit ready? I'll wait for him to change his clothes. He's going to lay his collar down. That's right. That's right. Hey, That's right. For a long time. That's right. You hear God voice? Amen. Really, son? Today, after so long a time. Today, after so long. So long a time. And many of you watching, and many of you here been hearing this message a long time. Long time. Watching us on YouTube for years. Still trying to justify your woman preacher. Still trying to hold up your second wife. Still trying to hold up that adulterous marriage. Still trying to live together, not married. Still talking about white power, black power, brown power, yellow power, and you are powerless. That's right. That's right. Still mad at me for preaching a long time. Long keep time. getting on YouTube saying, you old nigga this, you nigga that, you nigga that, you nigga the other, and you wonder why I don't get mad. <laughs> Amen. Well, why, why do you don't get mad, Pastor Jenny? Because I'm not a nigger. That's right. That solves that right away. That's, that's all right. That's right. You, ain't, you ain't talking to me. That's right. Why are they all mad? I've gotten letters. You hear me? I nigger this and that. I don't get mad. No. I read it. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's right. Glory to God. That's right. They can't stand this type of preacher, so they say I'm arrogant. Because the preacher you have is sugar daddies. That's right. Who rub you in your sins so you can purr like a kitten. Amen. You became comfortable like a little pig. Yeah. That's we right. come with the branding of the Bible. And I guarantee that pig will make a different noise when that hot brand hit him. A pig do not make the same noise when he's in mud. And when that branding iron hit him. No, no. Or to God, we come with the branding iron of holiness and put it right to your preacher. That's right. Right to his flesh. Get me? That's right. So this is why you love man-made religion. You love it. You got comfortable with it. You don't care how filthy your religion is. I mean, lies you learn. You have made up in your mind you're not going to give up this or give up that. And I have people tell me, I don't care what the Bible says. That's right. You're not hurting me. <laughs> I'm not even offended. No. I'm not even moved. Oh, no. I received four, five, six pages of letters, of front and back, cussing me out. That's like 12 pages. My Lord. Because I've had someone send me, when I say cussing, I mean, fill pages. I think, but they had to do it on the computer. So the same cuss word, keep repeating itself. F you, 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 F you. Next page. Mother this, mother that, mother that, mother that, mother that. Next page. Liar, son of a ooh, son of a ooh, son of a ooh. Liar, liar, liar. My Lord. Gino ain't moved. My Lord. 
Because when it's done, I'm coming right back in the training room of scripture. That's right. I'm going right back to the Bible. <laughs> Say I'm a liar, huh? Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. Come right back again. When the bell rings, come right back again. That's right. Right back again. Right back again. And pay you no mind. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It gives me joy <laughs> when you cuss me out. Every name you call me That's right. makes me happy. Because I knew it was the branding iron of the Bible That's right. that got under your skin. Just like they could not escape the apostles' teaching when they walked this earth. And they thought the remedy that would make them get around it was to kill them. Kill them. Was to murder them. And after the apostles, some was killed. And some undoubtedly died of natural causes. Yeah. The devil didn't get rid of this. No, no. Because there's a scripture where the Lord testified. He never left himself without a witness. Without a witness. Without a witness. The always purpose yeah. to have witnesses yeah, in the earth. Right. Regardless of what time, what generation, he will give forth an X amount of knowledge that is necessary for that generation of that time. And then, as generations come, the light starts getting brighter. Brighter. What do you mean brighter? He determines what stage of light That's will right. be best for that generation. How much light? How much information I'm going to give? How much doctrine? How much wisdom? How much knowledge? How much understanding? I can't dump them all at one time because the Bible says such knowledge is too high. Too high. I can't attain it to it. How are you going to get it, Lord? Line upon line. Precept. Precept upon precept. Here a little. How much to be given? Here a little. Here a little. There a little. Here. What is here and there? Old Testament, New Testament. That's right. That's right. Because what happened here is fulfilled there. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Holy Ghost says what? Today, if you will hear his voice. Verse. Back in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 7. Today. If you will hear his voice. If you hear God's voice. Harden not your hearts. Now, what? What else? For if Jesus had given them rest. If Jesus had given them rest. Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Did you hear this? That's right. Now let's see how we hear God's voice in the book of Titus. Now the book, now the book of Titus, chapter one, and at verse three. Listen at this. But hath in due time, hath in due time, manifested, manifested his, his word through preaching, through preaching which is committed which unto is committed me, committed unto me, according to the commandment of God, our Savior. God, our Savior. So, viewers, and you that are here, God make manifest His word. Through God's preaching. voice is heard through preaching. Through preaching. Are you hearing God's voice in your church? Mm. Well, Pastor Dennis, you read the words of the devil. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. I don't mean you're hearing God's voice. And how shall they preach? Yeah. yeah. How can you hear? Except they be sent. To read, listen at this. Romans chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 14. That's right. How then shall they call on him? How shall they call on him? In whom they have not believed. How can you call on the one you don't believe? And how shall they believe, how in, shall him they believe in him? Of whom they have not heard. Of whom they haven't heard. And how shall they and hear? How shall they hear? Without a preacher. Without a preacher. And how shall they preach? And how shall they preach? I, except except they, be, they be sent. They be sent. As it is written. As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them. That do what? That preach the gospel of peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who sent your preacher? Who sent him? Don't tell me what university you've been to. He ain't sent. That's God right. preachers don't need a college degree. I, right. I have no theology degree in preaching. Never been to a Bible college in my life. That's right. We was at the airport in Philadelphia, and a man saw me. He said, aren't you uh, the preacher on television? I said, yes, sir. He said, I got something to say to you. He said, you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> we went through, you know, security, putting our shoes and stuff back on. I said, really? I'm weird. He said, I don't mean it in a bad way. He said, this is what freaks me out about you. He said, you got an answer for everything. I said, no, I don't have an answer for everything. The Bible has an answer for everything. He said, it's the fact that you go to the Bible for everything. He said, to me, that's weird because I have never even heard of a preacher that goes to the Bible for everything. He said, that's new. <laughs> because most preachers give you their opinion or they refer you to some great philosopher or theologian or they tell you, read the book written by Dr. Lucifer of Ph.D. Yale Harvard University. That's right. <laughs> I'm not against reading other books, but I am against men's wisdom contradicting God. And if reading other books will give you influence to make you denounce God, rebel against God, reject God, you better take that book and push it aside. That's right. Because God don't lie. No. Oh, you're spiritually naked tonight. Is that why you're hiding in your false church preacher? Is that why you're hiding under your second wife? Because you hear God's voice? That's right. Is that why you're still living together, not married? Is that why you still got that weed? And why you still got that crap? That's right. 
That why you still a bigot with your swastika in your basement for your man cave? Yeah. That's right. Is that why you still got your Black Panther flag? Yeah. With your tam to the side of your fist in the back of your jacket? Is that why you white brothers and sisters just look for a white preacher because you think white is right? And you can't take it when a black man tell the truth because you believe if he's black, uh, he brings a form of uh, depreciation of value to biblical principle. That's right. Say it, man. Say it, man. That's right. <laughs> Some black folk the same way. The white man got the truth, they won't hear him. That's true. Because they don't trust him because he's white. Because they associate white with many evils that took place in the world by white folk. They won't tell you, but that's the truth of it. I tell you because I ain't scared of you. That's right. <laughs> and there's some white folk, black man coming to church, every white sister grabbed their pocketbook. <laughs> they look at him strange. White man coming to all black church. The Lord is blessing us right now. The whole reaction is different. I wouldn't care if you're related to the Pillsbury snowman. And I don't care if you're just as black. You look like the period of a sentence with eyes. My Lord. <laughs> Come on back to Bible. Right. And obey what the word of God say or your white hide and your black hide is going to hell. Going to hell. Amen. That's right. When I preach like this, even black folk wrote me and said, you are a traitor to your own people. My people is God's people. God's people. <laughs> you ain't my people because you black. You ain't your color and skin don't make you my people. God says this is my people, my people. which are called by my name. That's it. Will humble themselves and pray. He itemized what his people is. <laughs> oh, you listen to the old troublemaker. That's right. You are spiritually naked. naked. When you are bigot, you are a naked white man and you are a naked black man. Okay. Fully clothed na naturally. But mentally you are barren and destitute of the truth. That's right. Unfruitful in spirit. Desolate in your soul. That's why your actions and your thoughts are full of corruption and evil. evil. And because you are spiritually desolate and spiritually naked, you have no problem sitting under that woman evangelist. Great. Because spiritually nakedness make you weak as a man. That's right. And make you ignore the light of scriptures which clothe you in righteousness. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. And what? Because thou sayest I am rich. Because thou sayest you're rich. And increase with goods. And increase in goods. And have need of nothing. Don't need nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched. Don't you know that you are wretched? And miserable. You are miserable. And poor. You are poor. And blind. And you can't see. And naked. I told you. Read that again. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. Go on chapter and verse again. Revelation chapter 3 and right verse 17. What is it? Because thou sayest, I... This, this is what you said. This is how you feel, preacher, churchgoer, so-called fake Christian. Because thou Apostle sayest... Apostolic, Pentecostal, non-denominational, bishop, homemade apostle, half pint pastor. That's right. One inch by one inch elder. That's right. Half of a centimeter evangelist. Amen. Hear this. Because Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. What is it? Because thou sayest, I am rich. This is what you said. That's right. And the preachers, they say it too, they brother. Say it. Oh, yeah. oh, they brag about the house they got, the cars they got. Remember, it is not, they, they criticize me and say, you preach against being rich. No, I don't. No. no sir. I preach against being rich when you got to break the law to do it. That's right. He that gather riches, not by right, by right. dies a fool. That's right. It was God that made Solomon rich, and Solomon didn't ask for it. That's right. He asked for the wisdom That's right. to lead God's people. That's it. So God can make you rich. That's right. Abraham was rich. Job, he was wealthy. Too. Yeah. The difference is the fear of God was in them. The riches didn't possess them. That's right. They possessed the riches. They ain't like you devils today. You're rich and join these secret societies that didn't say you're a Christian. You're no more a Christian than a dog can wear Stacey Adams on his two front legs and Nikes on his back legs. <laughs> Amen. And be an NFL and an NBA coach simultaneously. <laughs> and play tennis with his tail. My Lord. <laughs> That's a bad dog, That's a bad dog. <laughs> And wear red band shades. You know that's a bad dog. That's a bad dog. Oh, you listen to the old man. That's right. So many of you, you're not used to a preacher telling you like this because I can't be bought. I'm not a hoe. You can't buy me. Well, Pastor Jenner, you ain't been offered the right thing. What can you offer me that I haven't been offered? I've been offered millions. I've been offered millions of dollars. I've been offered planes. I've been offered yachts. Was any other tempted? No. <laughs> because none of it was a greater offer than the offer that was already on the table. That's right. The offer that was already on the table that I accept is eternal life with God. Oh, none of that stuff tempt me. 
Hallelujah. I'm a man that worked and don't mind working. Roll my sleeves up and work. And God have blessed me and my family. That's right. I don't mind working. I work and work good. That's right. But I cannot be bought. When I say I can't be bought, you can try it. You're going to make a fool and a sucker out of yourself. I cannot be bought by nobody and nothing, nor am I tempted That's right. by what you offer me. What you offer me, little cheap stuff. A plane, that's cheap. That's right. A Rolls Royce. If I want a Rolls Royce, I go to a dealer and buy one. Right. That's what I want. That's what you want. I've been offered Maybach. If I want a Maybach, I go to the dealer, tell my son, drop me off. That's right. And look, this is what I want. I want a Midnight Black or Armadine Black with ivory interior. <laughs> I don't mind any pastor. You want a loan? No. I want to buy it, cash, and drive off. Drive off. That's what I want. I can buy it. Wonderful. I wish I can. You know that little strip of, of material between the Bible? I wish I can light it like a stick of dynamite and ride by the false stretches. <laughs> Amen. Like the gangsters. You know the gangsters. I, I, I was one who always loved old classic white, black and white movies. Amen. Looking at the Edward G. Robinsons and the Humphrey Bogarts and yeah. Amen and and, and, and and the James Cagans. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, when they would ride by and throw a bomb and level a store. Oh God, if I can do that, the false stretches. Amen. I, I ride by and light the biggest Bible and blow your preacher up with his robe on. His robe on. So you can see his body smoking and burning, buck naked. <laughs> Give him a taste of hell. That's right. <laughs> Are you listening? That's right. <laughs> you know I love this. Amen. I really do. I love this. Amen. Come on, Williams. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. No, no, I'm not tempted by that kind of stuff. That stuff don't move. I'm, no. I'm old school. I believe in working for what you want. That's I right. don't believe in bamboozling the people and using the people. And I believe it gives people a great form of satisfaction and comfort knowing they got an overseer who won't take and dime to rob from them. I won't, I won't rob you out of a dime. Now, if you can cut that dime in half, I won't even steal that. That's right. Why? Jesus is coming. That's right. My mother and father didn't raise no thief. Amen. God made Hallelujah. 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 God made me. Hallelujah. God made me a preacher. Oh, yes. Oh, dear God, I'm, and I must say, he did a good job making me a preacher. Yes, he did. Amen. What did he say? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. Look at how the world thinks. Because thou sayest, I am rich. Thou sayest. I'm not, uh, I'm not impressed with you. That's right. It made me think of one false prophet who said the Lord showed him. You know these men that lie on God quicker than you can spit on the ground. He said the Lord showed them that I was in a Cadillac, white Cadillac. I believe white Cadillac limousine with about seven to eight homosexuals. My Lord. He My probably Lord. saw himself with all them fags. That's right. <laughs> he didn't even have to lie on me. Anyone that's been around me know I'm a man that hates limousines. Amen. I hate limousines and I don't like white cars. <laughs> it's just a personal preference with me. I don't like white cars. Right. I just don't like them. Amen. I don't want them. Now, don't feel bad if you got a white car. That's your business. I say I don't like them. That's right. If you got a white car, my wife got a white car, but right. I don't like white cars. Right. It's just a personal preference for me. Right. Well, the prophet said the Lord showed. The Lord showed. Mm. Now, why would God show you that I'm in a Cadillac for about seven to eight homosexuals? My Lord. What is the substance in it? What's the substance? That's yeah. yeah, a lie. I just showed you the happiness down in his soul. <laughs> it's probably for other men. Yeah. Want me to be like him. I will never be like you. <laughs> and all right, Dennis. <laughs> and all right, man. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. Hoorah. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Something. How these men can get up in front of their congregation and just lie on God. What make it so bad? No conscience. That's right. The Lord showed me. Like these fellas, remember Robert Till? Yeah. Who would get on television for hours and speak in tongue when he get ready and beg you for money. The Lord spoke to me. Wait a minute. The Lord, the Lord told you to give it. Give it. Give those $10,000. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. <laughs> or you'd be like Kenneth Copeland. Yes. We're supposed to be having tongues conversations. So the Lord And he laughing with folks. My Lord, you my dumb church going suckers. That's right. That's right, man. Mm. You're a church going sucker. My Lord. We labor stripping the Bible apart so you can stop being stupid. That's it. In church, stupid. That's right. Saying amen and jumping over chairs and running around buildings over foolishness and folly. Yeah. Come back to Bible. That's right. Learn the truth of it. Learn the truth. Stop just going to church shaking like you was a bunny rabbit. That stuff that I'm preaching, you don't find folk do a lot of running. They be looking at me like I'm crazy. That's right. <laughs> eh? That's right. 
Come on, Wales. What did he say? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. All right, viewers, look at yourself and say, is this you and your mama? That's right. And your daddy and your pastor. Your pastor. And your congregation. You that are here. Yeah. See, is this you? Because thou sayest, I am rich. Think of something, don't you? Mm. The kind of car you got, the kind of house you live in. So what? So what? You said you got a lot, big deal. That's right. This is the way people are. Because thou now sayest, say, I am rich. Thank God. That I am rich. And increased with goods. Oh, I got a whole lot. Whole lot. Like some people that log onto the program, they're always talking about crip, crip coins that they invest in. Yeah. So they use our program to talk about it. Get, get up, get up. Stop logging onto the telecast talking about your kryptonite you invested in. That's right. Are you kidding about your kryptonite you invested in? All of it will go to hell along with you. If That's you don't right. repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and follow the word of God, there ain't no money going to be in hell. No. You are in this life to walk with God. That's right. How much money you have, that's your business. That's business. I don't care how much money nobody has. That's right. Am I right, Axel? That's right. Come on, Mr. Williams. Because thou sayest, I am rich. Did you say that? No, Pastor. You don't? No. All right. Nope. Come on. Because thou sayest, I am rich. Say you're rich. And increased with goods. And increased with goods. And have need of nothing. Don't need nothing. And no That's the way people are. You got all your money, your house, and land. Money. They go as far as saying they don't need God. It's true. That's right. They have actually went that far. I don't need God. Who is God? Who is God? Hold that scripture. Give it the book of Job. Job. Let me show you the attitude and the thought process of people. Job. Let me certify this with Job. Real quick. Job chapter 1. We'll start at verse 13. Listen. They spend their days in wealth. Yeah. They spend their days in wealth, but what? And in a moment. How quick? In a moment. Where do they travel? Go down to the grave. What else? Therefore, they say unto God. They say to God. Depart from us. Get away from me, Lord. For we desire not the we knowledge of thy ways. We desire not the knowledge of your ways, God. What is the Almighty? Do you hear the arrogance? Oh. Arrogance. Do you hear the self-righteousness? That's right. Did you hear how hell-bound, high-minded they are? High-minded. They say, what is what, the Almighty? What is God? That we should serve him. Who is he? That's right. That I should serve him. And what profit should we have? What would it gain for me? If we pray unto him. If I should pray to him, use our arrogant food. That's arrogance. You breathe by God's permission. You walk by God's permission. That's right. You sit by God's permission. That's right. You eat by God's permission. That's right. You see and hear and touch and smell all by God's permission. That's right. How did you get so devilish arrogant, Mr. Man so and Miss Woman? How did you get so high and mighty? Oh, yeah. Has your wealth became equal to heroin and crack that you inject yourself with the lust of wealth until now you done got so high? You think you're too high to submit and obey a real and just God? Yeah. God have a way of showing us what we really are and what we never was. Never was. Are you listening? That's right. What is it? They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. And? Therefore they say unto God, depart from us. They say to God. Depart from us. Get away from me, Lord. For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. We don't want the knowledge of thine ways. What is the Almighty that we should Look serve Look at the him? attitude. Look at the attitude. Look at the attitude. That's right. Lord Jesus. That's right. I remember one message far as I preached. He said, some folk called me a prophet. He said, that's too small of a title for me. Uh, that's something to say. Imagine. Imagine that. Listen, it's hard to be a brother. If the title prophet wasn't too small for Jesus. Mm. For Moses said, God shall raise up a prophet like me. Yes. And him shall you hear. You better read that quickly. Yeah. Come on, son. You hear what I'm talking. Get, 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 get the chapter. Get the verse where you hear me talking. And give the third chapter of the book of Hebrews because I want to certify he's a prophet and an apostle. And I want to show you why he got both titles. Yeah. Jesus is prophet. And Jesus is minister. And Jesus is apostle. I want to show you why he's all of this. Minister simply means to serve. See, when the Lord says to Moses, God shall raise up a prophet like me. Prophet represent messenger. And Jesus was the seal of the prophet. Acts chapter 3 and at verse 22. Listen at this. For Moses truly said, Moses unto, truly the said unto the father, a prophet, a prophet, Shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, Real quick. like unto me? Like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things. Him shall you hear in everything. Whatsoever he shall say Whatever unto, he you. Shall say unto and you, it shall come to pass that every soul, every soul which will not hear that, that, prophet, hear that prophet shall be shall destroyed be cut off, from among shall the people. Be cut off or destroyed from among the people. So in the Old Testament, the prophets was the highest spiritual office you could hold. There was no apostles in the Old Testament. The office didn't exist. Only the prophets was the highest office that exists. Over here come the prophet Haggai, by God's permission, telling us. That the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Latter house means church of the last days. Former means the church of the past. And the church of the past was the people of God, Israel, in the wilderness. 
the church of the future, the latter house, church of the last days, will be greater than the church of the former. Because the former church functioned according to the flesh, and the spiritual church will function according to the spirit. That the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The church of the former house of the Old Testament will offer them lamb, bullocks, heifers, and turtle doves. But here comes Jesus between law and grace. He was born under the law. It is written, even so he was chosen in bondage under the elements of the world when the fullness of time was come. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that was under the law, that we may receive the adoption of sons. Within the book says, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Meaning, grace came during the law. Moses' law was the rule of that time, but when Jesus came, he came because he was mercy to redeem them from the law. That's right. That we may receive the adoption of sons. So he came being prophet. Prophet. For Christ is the end of the law. And now he comes being apostle. In Hebrews chapter head, first member of the body. Hebrews 3 and 1 said, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. What should we think about? Consider the apostle. Who? The apostle. And high priest of our profession. What's his name? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the apostle because he's the beginning of the New Testament church. Christ Jesus is the prophet because Christ is the end of the law. Are you getting me? All right, let's go back to where we were back in the book of Revelation. Are you getting this? Yeah. Back in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. I hope you can get this. Because thou sayest, I am rich. You said. That's many of you that are watching. You got a whole lot. Amen. Somebody said, Pastor Danny, you always talk about how many churches you build. I'm talking about churches that God bless us with. We ain't glory in wealth. We're glory in souls. They give us great joy to be able to go to a place and set up a temple without mortgages. That give us great joy. Amen. It's a good feeling not to have no mortgage. Right. You know how I feel to have one. <laughs> and it's also a blessing to have a mortgage and we're able to pay it. Amen. Both is a blessing. Even though I prefer not having one. Amen. But if we got to have one, the Lord bless where it can be paid. Amen. So we glorify God in all that. That's right. Come on, son. Because thou sayest I am rich. Say you're rich. And increase with goods. And you increase with a whole lot. And have need of nothing. You say you don't need nothing and you include God in your nothing. That's right. Mm -hmm. And know it's not that thou art wretched. You don't know the fact that you're wretched. And miserable. And miserable. And finish that. I need you to go back to Job right after that. It's in the days and wealth. Right. So get your fingers all locked in it already. Right. All right, come on, finish it up. And know it's not that thou art wretched. Yeah. And miserable. And poor. You're wretched. You think you're happy, but this is how you look in God eyes. That thou art wretched. You're out there partying, shaking your hips. You got your gown on that calls you five and ten thousand dollars. You got your suit, your name brand suit that calls you fifteen thousand dollars and all that stuff. I don't care if silkworms <laughs> make your socks every night. Silkworms make your socks, and you ain't got to get alligator shoes. You wear the real live alligator. <laughs> You come stepping in the club and your shoes are snapping at folk. <laughs> Snap, crackle, and pop. It doesn't matter. I'm taking this route to show all members of the human family that nigga, you came here. Yeah. Nigga, you're leaving. That's right. Why is dust and ashes exalted? Why you thank you so much? You only can, if you got a mansion that got 13,000 toilets, you only can squat one at a time. Amen. Gotta make it so plain, you got to understand it. Yeah. Hmm? Yes, God. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Your toilet paper spindle can be 500 karat gold if possible. And the actual spindle that the toilet is on is pure pearl. <laughs> Amen. What you gonna do with that paper that a person not gonna do with newspaper? That's right. I'm taking this route to shake some sense in you. That's right. Stop thanking you so much because of what you have yeah. and what you own. What you, own. And you got your nose stuck up in the air and look down upon everybody else. That's right. Bible said, let no man think no higher than he ought to think, but think soberly. soberly. Yep. Nigga, you came here. That's right. Nigga, your self-righteous, arrogant self shall return. shall return. Listen. Because thou sayest, I am rich. You say you're rich. And increase with goods. Wait, wait. And have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched. And you miserable. You don't know this. You don't know this about yourself. Right. God say you're wretched, you're miserable. And poor. You're poor. And blind. You're blind. Somebody say, well, how can you say I'm poor? I'm a multi-man there. Please, there's more than one way to be poor. poor. You're rich naturally, but you broke spiritually. That's right. Spiritually, you're naked, poor, poor. wretched. And blind. Blind. And naked. You're naked. All right, go back to Job real fast so I can knock off. Job chapter 1 and verse 21. What? And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. No, 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 let's go back to the rich. Let's go back to the rich folk. And the book of Job. And the book of Job and the rich folk. I believe, uh... Back in Job chapter 21, chapter 21 and verse 14. Quickly, yes. At verse 13. Come on, son. They spend their days in wealth. And the go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, depart from us. Leave us. For we desire we not the knowledge of thy know ways. Nothing about you, Lord. What is the Almighty? What is the Almighty? That we should serve, that we should serve him? him. And what profit should we what have? What shall we gain? If we pray unto him. If we pray to him. Lo, their good is yeah. not in their hand. 
You're no good. No good. God said you're no good. That's right. He said your good is not in your hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And what? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? All right, go back to the Job. Naked we came, and then let's go back to the New Testament and close it out. Back in Job chapter 1 and verse 21. All right, viewers. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's this womb. This is you, me, and everybody. Naked came I out of my mother's womb. I hear you, me. I want all you multi-millionaires and billionaires around the world. That's right. Doesn't matter if you got a car when you raise the engine. You have 50 real horses under there. <laughs> when all went back to Flintstone time. Amen. 50 real horses. And their hoofs are solid gold. And they are galloping under that engine. Lord. Wouldn't that be something? Yes, sir. What is it? And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked you came here. And naked shall I return thither. Naked. You shall return thither. The Lord gave. The Lord gave. And the Lord hath taken away. And the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God gave you life, Augusta, Georgia. And the same God that gave you life in due time, he's going to collect your mother. He's going to collect your father, your wife, your sons and your daughters. God is going to collect you. All of us have members of our family that have been collected by the Lord. That's right. They're not here now. They're dead. And they only died in two categories, with God or out of God's will. Doesn't matter the nice words some old preachers say over them. Doesn't matter the choir that's singing going up yonder. And here they go on their way to hell. That's right. It doesn't matter. You know, some of these preachers, they give them this big funeral glass coffin and dress them up almost like they're the Pope. Big old that's tall true. stovepipe hats and then prop the body up so the body's like it's standing up. I don't care what position you put that center. You can put them at a card table. I saw one group, their, a friend of theirs died and they took the corpse and positioned it at a card game and put cards in the hand with the eyes open so he can look like he's alive no poker in hell no gym rummy in hell oh, no. don't you people understand that you're going to meet god one day this is for real oh yeah this is for real you played church so long that's why the reality of god been watered down in your mind that's right been watered down that's in right. your life have been watered down in your process of thinking yeah. but glory to god let me close out i believe with ezekiel uh let me say is if 33 33 33 let me see if that's what I want. Ezekiel chapter 33 and at verse 33. Listen at this. And when this cometh to pass. You're going to find out how real this is. Lo, it will come. When this come to pass. When the things of God come to pass. And lo, it will coming, come. What the people going to realize? Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. You're going to realize. You're going to realize. You will understand. That's right. That's right. That it's time to get on God's side. All of you that went to some church and bow your head and raise your hands. Many of you were sincere. You thought you were saved, you was no more saved than a crack selling duck. And that duck can lay square eggs and marry a pit bull. I have little pit bull ducklings. Pit bull face with duck feet. You're not saved. Oh, none of you. You've been lied to by your preacher. You got a sinner for a preacher. There ain't no such thing as bowing head and raise your hand. I had one brother from Kentucky tonight asking to please explain the 10th chapter of the book of Romans real quick now. Yeah. Ninth verse. That was Will's famous scripture. Oh, when yes. he was out there, a lion, trinitarian, full of that devil out of hell. Blind and wretched. <laughs> All right, Kentucky, hear me. Romans chapter 10 and that verse 9. This is what you preach is preaching. Preach it ignorantly. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. You must acknowledge that Jesus exists. Thou and you must believe that Jesus is no longer dead. That's what it means. Acknowledge that he rose from the dead. We don't serve no dead savior. Right. All right. Thou shalt be saved. No, this is not how the preachers preach it. They preach if you do this, you are saved. Thou shalt be saved. The Bible didn't say that you are saved when you do it. No. If it says you shall be, that means you got some more to do. More to do. Now let's balance that out with the 16th chapter of the book of Mark if I Mark. believe. And Mark 16, 16 is it? Mark chapter 16 and verse 16. That's what? He that believeth. He that believeth. And is baptized. Oh. You see, you shall be saved, but you got more to do. He that believeth, you got to believe, and is baptized. And if you're baptized, shall be saved. Well, you got some more to do. So just believing and confessing is not enough. Not enough. Amen. And that's what you do in your church. Preachers say, if you want a church home, or look at the television, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, and you are saved. You are. The Bible didn't say that. Thou shalt be saved. They say you shall be. Shall be. That means you got some more to do there. He that believeth and is baptized, what shall be saved? Shall be. That's right. Amen. And what about if you don't believe? And he that believeth not what gonna happen to him? shall be damned. You can hold your head down and raise your hand up and repeat your sinner's prayer. Pastor Jenny, I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then what is the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? That's right. Then the preacher should have said the name should of the Father, it. Son, and the Holy Ghost. You don't baptize somebody and repeat Jesus. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You take them down and bring them up. Don't get out the water yet. That's right. Tell them, hey, 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 Bishop, Bishop, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Ask him, what is the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Ask him. Oh, wait a minute, I baptized your name in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. No, you didn't. You took me down, and you said you was going to do it, and you never said the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I'm still standing here waiting for you to say it. The name. What is that name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? That's right. Go ahead, Pastor. 
grab him by the collar of that wet robe. What is the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? <laughs> Tell me what it is. Amen. And if he keeps saying Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you got a dumb man for a pastor. That's right. I'm a son by birth. I'm a husband by marriage. I'm a father because we got children. You ain't coming to see. You coming to see the person that got the name. That's it. Who's a father, son, and a husband? Somebody say, hey, you fathers in there. All of us got kids going to be, yo, what's up? Who you talking to? That's right. That's right. Hey, son. All of us men going to start looking. Exactly Even women who ain't nobody, son, they going to look. <laughs> the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. And he's the Christ. He's the Christ. So when Jesus said, baptize in the name Jesus. of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, that's the same thing me telling you do something in the name of oh. this son, husband, and father. And if I tell you do it in my name, you got to call my name. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 was fulfilled. And Acts 2 38. Acts 2 38. When it was done, then Peter said unto them, Repent. Now you gotta repent. You got to repent. God wants you to be sorry. Yes. Amen. You'd have got two wives and two husbands and women preachers and our races and our biggest and living together, not married, smoking and gambling and drinking. And you say, Well, I tell a little white liar. It's a liar. That's right. Ain't no little white liar, little black liar. Just a liar, you liar. That's right. That's like saying, I just told you a little white truth, a little black truth. You either speak the truth or you don't. That's right. Get me. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. And be baptized every, one, every one of you. How much of Augusta? Every one of you. I got everything in here that haven't obeyed it. That's right. And don't need to get baptized and then go back to your false church. You'll go to hell just the same. Just the same. People get mad at me because I tell people leave your church. That's not the love of Christ. It is the love of Christ. It is the love of Christ. Christ said through his apostles in the book of Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. What should the people do? Wherefore come out from among them. Come out from among them and do what? And be ye separate. Be ye separate. Saith the Lord. The Lord. And touch not the unclean, not the unclean thing, thing. And I will receive you. You see, he'll he receive you. But if you want God to receive you, you got to repent of your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and pack up and get out the false church again. Seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, which is being filled with God. That's right. You bow your hand and raise your hand, you're still a sinner. Amen. You pray the sinner's prayer, you're still a sinner. That's right. You was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and not in the name of Jesus Christ. You're still a sinner. Right. Who? Your mama, your daddy, your pastor, all your children, all your, your children. girlfriend, mm. your boyfriend, your dirty uncle, and your greedy aunt. That's right. And your slap happy grandpappy. Peter said, What? Repent. Repent. All the churches that baptize Father, Son, and Holy Ghost baptized wrong. Right. Church of God in Christ, Church of God in Prophecy, Assemblies of God, Church of Pillar Ground in Truth. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational, Catholic, Protestant, they all baptized the same way. <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Everybody was baptized, and the preacher said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're not baptized, and you didn't obey Jesus, no. because he said, do it in the name of. That means you got to call the name. Say it. What's my name? That's right. You got to call that name. Call the name. That's right. Ali got his name, and his name was changed to Muhammad Ali. He got in the ring. That man didn't want to say that name. Ali beat it out of him. <laughs> What's my name? What's my name? That's right. He's getting baptized. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. No, the Lord wants you to call his name. Call the name. That's right. Fourth chapter, book of Acts, so I can close out. Begin at verse 10. Quick, Williams. Acts chapter 4 and at verse 10. Yeah. Be known unto you all. Be known unto all of you that are here in Augusta, Georgia, and you that are watching around the world. And to all the people of Israel. All the people of Israel. That by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the name. Of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom, ye crucified, whom God raised whom from the dead, raised from the dead, even by Him, even by Him, do with this man stand here before you hold, by hold, be, before you hold. Heal. This is the stone. This is the stone which was set at naught of your building, which has become the head, of the, head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. Why? For there is none other name under heaven. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost ain't no name. No. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are titles. That's right. You got to know the name, so you can call the name of that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You have to know my name, right. so you can know. That I'm a son and a husband and a father. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's why I'm, sometimes I'm Pacific and call the name of certain false prophets. <laughs> Amen. False prophet is a title. For them, I say his name, Osteen. Yeah. Joel Osteen. He got the title, false prophet. But his name, Joel Osteen. That's right. Now you know his name. You know his name. Are you getting me? That's it. Hear this. For the, neither is there salvation in any other. Uh -huh. For there is none other name under heaven given among men what is whereby we must be saved. Then Peter. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. This is the way that everybody got to be baptized. And I do mean everybody. Everybody. And I mean everybody. That's right. I got you out of here. Yeah. You haven't obeyed this. You got to get ready to obey it and come out the fake church in and walk with the truth of the Bible. That's right. Or if the church is here in Augusta, they're nothing but a mess like every other place. Yeah. You know, Noah had a message coming to the ark. Or else drown. Yeah. God messages everybody got to be born again into one church That's it. or else go to hell. And the church ain't Gino Jennings church. No. Don't try to make it my church. No. You guys want everybody to come in your church? Nope. <laughs> I don't have no church. No. 
Mm. I don't have no church. Jesus said up on this rock, I build my church. Put the church. church on me. That's right. No, I was put in the church. That's right. Holy Ghost put you in the church. Yeah. I was put in by the Lord. Amen. So it was here long before me, buddy. Oh, yeah. Then Peter. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And do what? And be baptized every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, what? For the remission of sins. And what did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the new birth. That's the new birth. That's how you're born again. When Jesus told Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born of the water. Being born of the waters when you're baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, of the Spirit, you're born of the Spirit, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues that the Spirit of God give out of Without that new birth, you cannot enter into the kingdom. Now, if there's anybody here who don't want to go to hell, you want to get out your naked state and realize that you're going to die one day. And if you want to get it right and get on God's side and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so you can truly, sincerely go back with God and don't want to play church. You want to be baptized right? Stand on your feet tonight, Augusta, if you want it. Wonderful. Look at here. All of you that are standing, go right to the back. All of you that are standing, go right to the back. I told you victory is ours before we get in town. God is good, isn't he? Look at the souls. Wonderful. Look at the souls. Rounding up. Then Peter. Then Peter said unto them, repent. You got this to do. Don't go back to your church tomorrow. Who? None of you. That's right. You're a pastor. Don't you even go. Pat, lock your own doors and don't even let your members in. You got a big orange and black sign that says detour. Amen. Amen. Put a yellow tape. Caution. Caution. That's right. Look at how God works. Now, viewers, if I said before, that's what got me. I'm, I'm dying. Standing on my feet, and I know I am. Not only do I know it, I feel it. Traveling around the world, not just little cities in America. We're literally traveling around the world. Greece want us there. Amen. Got to go back to Ireland, and Scotland, and Italy. Have to go to Dubai, and Australia, and Sweden, and Switzerland, the Hawaiian Islands, and the islands out there near Japan and China. Fiji Islands, the Congo, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. in Africa. Canada. Why are we doing this and not getting paid? Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Ain't enough money in the world you can give me to pay me for this. This is priceless. Amen. Amen. This is priceless. Take advantage of it. Why you on the receiving end of it? Oh yeah. Take advantage of it. I advise everybody that are watching. Washington D.C. I heard you. I heard you. I'd be there. God be my help. Amen. We're coming into Washington D.C. to set up First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the D.C. area. God willing, we'll be there. Amen. You know, this message is so strong, I can go to a city where we don't have no members and buy a church and announce that it's there. And people just roll in there. They will. People have never witnessed nothing like this in their lifetime. They have never seen it. Hallelujah. Come on, take off. Amen. And this is why people over social media is mad. They wish up Gino Jennings. No, nobody wish up me. No. People say that, comment that, viewers, because they want to deter you from this good blessing. That's right. But viewers, like I've told you, the people that get over social media, who try to fight this, the devil got them on too. Yeah. Got them on as a distraction to keep you from obeying this. That's right. But when it's done, just ask them, who in America, what holy sanctified preacher is getting Bible results That's right. That's right. in America or out? That's right. Like the truth of God, name one. That's right. Name God, is backing. God is backing this. That's it. It's Hallelujah. not Pastor Jennings, it's the moving of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God sent me to do this. Yes. Amen. I wasn't sent by no border director. Pat, I don't believe God sent you. Psh, what do I get? That's right. You don't see me going out my way trying to convince you of nothing? No. Hey Amen. You, you may not believe that my suit is but blue plaid. I ain't going to stand and try to argue with you. No. I'm going to wear my blue plaid suit back to my hotel <laughs> and leave you standing there disbelieving. That's right. Don't be a fool now. Don't be a fool. Don't let these ignorant preachers and hell bound men who make all type of little podcasts on Geno Jenner. They ain't doing it by the number. Yeah. Which goes to show you how strong this message is. Yeah. They're not doing that on no other preacher on social media. That's right. That's right. Men are popping up like roaches come out the crack of your walls when the light come on. That's right. Pastor Jenner is this. Geno Jenner is this. Geno Jenner is this. I think of the woman who said God told her to prophesy because of our platform and God told her that I have to tell some of the black people in the congregation of the truth of God that they're Israelites. My response was, God ain't told me you nothing. <laughs> right then she flipped the prophecy. She, first she said, God told her to call me Pastor Jennings. Right, she she said, out of respect. That's she said, I don't right. normally call these preachers like Jake's pastor. She said, but the Lord told me, in, in, in my soul, he spoke to me and said, call him Pastor Jennings because he's a real man of God. But when I respond and broke that stuff and cast it back to hell, she said, the Lord told me to call him Gino. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. Why don't you stop playing church? 
Stop playing church. That's right. Oh, everybody. That's right. That's right. Stop playing church. I'm like your old grandpa that you don't like because your daddy and mama spoiled you. Gave you chocolate when you wanted and candy bars and blow pops and Mikey nights and good and plenty and Mary Jane and squirrel nuts. <laughs> hey, squirrel nuts. You got squirrel the nuts. Bazooka bubble gum. And you got them Chico sticks and moon pie. <laughs> Amen. Got them good and plenty. Here I come slapping all that religious candy out your hand. Now you like a child. A child enjoying the ice cream, that thing fall on the ground. Just stand there. Ah, ah, that's where you are, Bills. We come slap your woman, preach your remarriage and divorce, your father, son, the Holy Ghost, baptism, your two gods in heaven, and all that trash. Slap it on the ground and flush it down to hell. Before you know it, podcast here, video there. Pod you see, these preachers, if you take notice, they only get subscribers or, or attention if they put my name That's right. under their broadcast. Yeah. Moment I say, Gino Genesis, everybody look. That's right. All I got to do is use the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. And, 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 and heaven moves. Heaven moves. That's right. Over to God. I said, heaven moves, I said, when I use his name. Yes, sir. Every place we go, heaven moves. Heaven moves. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Right, Girl, you hear me? The dead this is plenty. Yes, we got a gospel that heaven moves with. That's right. Guarantee. Hallelujah. Yes, I said yes, heaven moves. Heaven with moves. It. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man wrote me and said, I don't believe you're an apostle. I don't approve of it. I ain't looking for none of your approval. No. I got God's approval. That's it. Amen. Don't need yours and don't want yours because if I get it, it don't mean nothing no way. That's right. But having God's approval, God's we go approval. from state to state, town to town, and wheresoever God sent. Yes, sir. That's right. That's why we go. Right. Because he, he, God guaranteed me victory. God did, not me. Right. 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 Mr. Williams, God guaranteed me victory. Right. Amen. You, I'm telling you the truth of it. That's the truth of it. God. Yes, God did it. God did. Amen. Amen. God Almighty Himself yes. guaranteed me victory. Thank you. Everywhere that Thank you. we go, He promised me. He guaranteed it. Hallelujah. 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 I don't care how sick I am. How tired Hallelujah. I am, Hallelujah. how exhausted I am. There's many of my travel. I'm sitting up in the pulpit, sick as I don't know what. You don't know it. Getting up preaching, sick body cramped with pain from head to toe. Nobody out there know. And still traveling and preaching. Exhausted because I know I'm going to have guaranteed victory. Guaranteed. Hallelujah. We have a God in the gospel. Glory to God that never failed. Never fails. Amen. I don't say he never failed me yet. Yet ain't attached to it. No, 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 no. Yet is an insult. You mean he never failed me yet? Yet. There are certain words you can't even attach to God. That's right. He really don't never fail me yet. He just don't fail. That's it. Period. Period. That's right. Period, I said. That's right. So viewers, out of all the ones that's hollering, they don't have the results that the truth of God has. No. You preachers, stop hollering. All of you from PAW in Washington, D.C. Right. That put out Bishop Gray and the other deacon. You've done them a favor. Yeah. Okay. You that are watching that go to that fake apostolic church where the women preach and the pastors and the bishops okay. are living in adultery. Anytime you got another wife and your first wife is living, I don't okay. care if it's your bishop. Okay. If he got a second wife and his first wife is living, he's an adulterous bishop. And I come to Washington and beat him out of his clothing with violence. That's right. Okay. You don't have an unadulterated gospel, and you got a second wife. Oh, wife. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So you've done Elder Gray and the deacon the favor. All of you members of that church, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. That's right. Leave it. Elder Gray and the deacon will be, God willing, in Philadelphia uh, next week when I be in town. All of you leave that church, rent a van, and make it the headquarters so I can see you like John said or like Paul said, face to face. <laughs> That's right. Leave it. I said. <laughs> Tell your bishop, jump on me with a second wife. Oh, hey. With that second wife teaching. Jump on Pastor Jenny. That's right. You all, up, all you PAW bishops. Bishop Ellis. Yeah, right. Bishop Ellis. Oh, hey. The overseer of the PAW. Oh, hey. If you stand behind that remarriage and divorce, you are an adulterous, loving hypocrite. hypocrite. And you're not a preacher. That's right. Who? Oh, none of you. Oh, hey. All of you oh, preachers oh, hey. in the pulpit who got Hallelujah. a second wife and your first wife is living. Oh, hey. You all are adulterous, false prophets. Oh, hey. And you are liars. Yeah. I don't care if it's your father. Yes, sir. Every pastor. 
All you bishops and elders, and P-A-W, P-A-W, U-P-C, all of you that claim you're apostolic or Pentecostal. Yeah. And your preacher got another wife, another wife. while his first wife is alive. None of you are preachers. Now come jump on Pastor Dennis. If you don't jump on me, that means you're taking what I tell you. That's right. Jump on me. I got a chip on my shoulder and I dare you to knock it off. You got a second wife, your first wife is living? Come knock this Bible chip off my shoulder, you all doctors, fingernail, manicure, oh, hey, man. wearing hypocrite. P-A-W preachers are hypocrites. Church of God in Christ that believe in divorce and remarry are hypocrites. Assemblies of God are hypocrites. Now jump on Pastor Dennis. Hallelujah. Huh? You, if any of you take this lion down, not only you're a hypocrite, you're a coward. Go ahead. All right. Hallelujah. You heard me. And it's all said. Hallelujah. 